How do you remove tarnish from silver? How do you polish silver? Those are great questions and we're going to talk about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now there are lots of house cleaners that go to customers' houses and they either upsell special services or the customers ask them for special services like can you polish my silver and what product on the market do you recommend? Now there's a variety of different ways to polish silver. Today we're going to talk about one of them. The one that we're going to talk about uses a product called Tarnex. Now Tarnex is the number one best-selling product on the market for removing tarnish from silver. The reason it's the number one is because it's been around for over 50 years and it's really well known. It's readily available everywhere. It's available in all of your drug stores and stores like Lowe's and Walmart. So it's easily accessible and it's five to six dollars for a bottle this size. Now there are some things that you need to be aware of and I'm not judging the product. I want you to decide that for yourself. But we will go over the SDS breakdown and then I will show you how to use it and then you can make a decision for yourself. But if a customer asks you, can you polish my silver? I want you to at least have this option in your back pocket. All right, the first thing that we need to be aware of is that there are two types of metals. The first type is a heavy metal, okay? It's a heavy metal determined on its density and its chemical behavior. And that would be gold, silver, platinum, and copper. Those are heavy metals. There are lighter metals like magnesium, aluminum, and titanium. And we're only going to use the Tarnex on the heavy metals. This is a heavy chemical for heavy metals, okay? All right, now I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes and we're going to go over the SDS breakdown, which is the safety data sheets. Every single company by law has to have a safety data sheet available. This one is available to you and it hides nothing, okay? The very first thing is who's the company behind it? And the company is Gelmar Inc. They're a 50 year old company and now it's third generation and it's run by Allison, who's the daughter. It's a woman owned company now. So, booyah! It's also the same company that creates CLR, which is a calcium, lime, and rust remover, which is also a very strong chemical. So, that you can be aware of. All right, the hazards. The hazards are clearly marked on the back label of the jar. So, if you buy the jar and you forget about the SDS sheets, everything you know to stay safe is on the back label of the container. All right, so I'm very happy about that and proud of Gelmar for actually being very honest in their advertising. All right, the product does have sulfamic acid in it, and that is a changing agent that becomes explosive when mixed with other chemicals. Now, in this form, it's okay to use, but we do not want to mix this product, Tarnix, with any other polishing agents or any other chemicals whatsoever. Okay, so we're not going to mix it with anything. The other agent that it has in it is thiurea, and that is an organic compound, which is like urea, but it has instead of an oxygen atom, it has been swapped out with a sulfur atom. All right, now for the first aid measures. We want to protect our eyes, our nose, our mouth, and our skin when using this product. It can be irritating to any of those. So we want to protect ourselves. We will use personal protective equipment while we do the polishing. All right, the next thing, firefighting measures. It is not flammable by itself, but if you mix it with other things, like I mentioned before, it can become explosive. So by itself, it's not flammable. So we just want to use it by itself. That's the only way we want to use it. All right, accidental releases. If it spills, there are no special rules for cleaning it up. You can just use a damp cloth or a sponge. So that's easy, right? Handling and storage. It is a chemical. This is a chemical that needs to be stored in a cool, dry place and away from heat. And you want to keep the lid on at all times. So you want to keep it airtight and away from children and pets. All right, we do want to use this in a ventilated area. All right, the next thing that we want to talk about is our personal protective equipment. This falls under the exposure controls. Now we want to protect ourselves because we're a house cleaner and we get to do lots of this on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, because of the nature of the product, we're not going to be doing a lot of silver polishing. It's a very rare occasion that happens for special projects. But we are going to protect ourselves and here's how we're going to do it. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put on our mask. This mask just goes over your ears and you pinch it at the top so that it closes the space at the top and then you pull it down over your chin. So this is the proper way to wear this unit, okay? So we're going to wear this just to protect our mouths and our breathing from fumes. We're also going to wear gloves. These are just nitrile gloves and they're disposable gloves and we're going to use them just in case any of the mixture comes in contact with our hands. Again, it says protect your skin. These disposable gloves will allow us to do that. 
Now, it doesn't say anything at all about eye protection, but just because I'm uber careful, I'm going to protect my eyes with my safety goggles as well. That way, if anything splashes up in my face, I've got my mask on and I've got my goggles on, and at least my eyes are protected. So this is optional, but I highly recommend it. The next thing that is optional, but I highly recommend, is my apron. And the reason I do this is it protects my uniform in case anything should splash on me as well. All right, the physical reactivity. What you're looking for in this dark container is something that looks like water. It's clear with a slightly hazy tint to it, and it has a very strong chemical odor. So when you pour it out, that's what you're expecting. All right, it's stable under all conditions, except if you mix it with something else. And if you mix it with something else, it becomes a completely different product, okay? So do not mix this with anything else. All right, so as far as the toxicological information, it is not toxic if you ingest it orally, according to the FHSA and the CPSC guidelines. Now, you're not going to ingest it for any reason, but if you do, those are the, the guidelines that you're following. All right, ecological information. It is biodegradable, but it is not good for fish. Do not get this near fish or your fish tank. All right, then the regulatory guidelines for tr transportation. Um, it is regulated by the Department of Transportation. So if you're going on a job and you're going to carry this with you, um, it cannot go in your carry-on luggage. You cannot take it with you. But you can check it in your checked luggage that goes at the back of the airplane in the cargo bin. So just so that you're aware of that. It has one of these safety lids so that you got to mash the lid down to turn it. Otherwise, it won't open. And that is to protect this from spilling either in an airplane or in your cleaning caddy. If it gets dumped over, it won't leak in your car because of the lid. It's also a safety precaution against children, so that if children, for some reason, try to open this up, they're going to have a heck of a time, okay? So, booyah to Gelmar for taking extra safety precautions to keep this product safe from people who are not supposed to be getting into it. Alrighty, so before I show you how to polish the silver, I want to show you my work smart, not hard tools. Now, the reason I want to do this is so that you don't show up to a customer's house and you don't have the proper tools with you. So, the first thing that I want you to do is think cotton. Cotton is going to be our key when polishing silver. We want to stay away from all wood products that are like paper products, paper towels, newspaper, stuff like that. Those are made of recycled wood, and the wood fibers can actually scratch the surface of silver, which is a very soft metal. So we want to stay away from all paper products, and we're only going to use cotton. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take a cotton towel with us. The towels we're going to be using after we wash the silver, then we're going to dry them off with a cotton towel. Then we're going to polish the silver, we're going to wash it again, and dry it off with a cotton towel. Then we're going to take the cotton towel and we're going to polish the silver as a final polishing before we're done. Uh, one thing that we are going to use is we're going to use a sponge. The sponge does not have a scrubby on it. This is just a sponge. When this is wet, this is what we'll use to actually wash the soap and the polish off, but the scrubby will scratch the silver. So a sponge with no scrubby. All right, then we have a couple of cotton products that we're going to take with us just because the intricacies of the silver will vary from piece to piece. So we're going to take some cotton swabs with us, and this will allow us to put the tarnix directly on the cotton swab, directly on the silver. Another thing we're going to take with us are cotton pads. These are makeup remover pads, and depending on the surface, this might be a better choice. Another thing we're going to take with us are some Q-tips. And because sometimes we need to get in small nooks and crannies, a Q-tip is perfect and it has the cotton tip. And then not cotton is a very soft nylon toothbrush. Now this is not our regular cleaning brush, but this is a toothbrush so that we can get in the nooks and crannies by dipping this inside the solution. All right, now before we begin, there's a hard fast rule that you need to know about using Tarnex. Once you put the Tarnex on the silver, you do not want it to stay on the silver for longer than two minutes. Two minutes is your time limit. And if you're not done, wash the thing, dry it off and start over again. So two minutes, it's got a two minute limit. Alrighty, those are the things that you need to be aware of and things that you need to just keep in the back of your mind as you do your polishing silver. But let's go take a look. Let's give it a try and see exactly how it works, shall we? Now, if you're listening to the podcast right now, what you can't see is that we've taken a soft bath towel and we've laid it on top of the counter where we are using it as our workstation for the polishing of the silver. Now we've dipped a cotton swab inside the Tarnex and we're brushing it now on a small silver platter that is badly tarnished, and we're watching it as it amazingly transforms itself into a nice, almost brand new looking silver platter. 
Now around the edges, there is some difficulty with the tarnish coming off and we're gonna have to dip our brush or our Q-tips inside the Tarnex so that we can get those edges. Now just a little bit of extra elbow grease might be all that's required in order to get some of the tarnish off this platter. But you will see that there are some smudges and some scratches that are just from age or what have you on this platter. And so it's gonna take a little bit of TLC and you wanna give yourself some time to do this. And again, we're working in the two minute time constraint. So before this is finished, we're gonna end up rinsing this and washing this a couple of times so that the Tarnex doesn't sit and dwell too long on this platter. Now I have taped up all of the silver pieces that we're gonna be cleaning today. And I taped them right down the middle with painter's tape so that you could see the before and after. And what we're looking at right now is an amazing before and after of this silver platter. All right, now we've rinsed and washed and dried the platter and we're coming back for a second round. When you bid a job for a customer, you have to give yourself plenty of time to do the second and the third round because on a lot of commercials and stuff that you see, people only clean it once and then it's magically transformed. But the reality is it usually takes two or three passes before you're gonna get it to meet your standard of excellence. So build in the time that it's gonna to take to actually do the job correctly because your referrals are gonna be based on how well of a job you did. And you don't want it to be sloppy and you don't wanna give the customer back something that's not quite complete or that it didn't work out properly. So give yourself plenty of time to do the job correctly. So in this particular silver cleaning session, we are cleaning a gravy container and we're cleaning a goblet that is busted in half. It's uh, a his and hers version and then combined together, it creates the whole goblet. Then we have a Christmas bell and the Christmas bell is giving me a bit of a trouble with the top of it where it connects to, to the little part that hangs on. It had some kind of a little, I don't know, glass piece or something that looked like mistletoe and it was hard to get underneath that. So we're gonna end up using both Q-tips and a toothbrush to try to get underneath that before I actually end up taking it apart because I, I'm, I'm unable to, to get the tarnish off underneath that connector piece. But you'll see that even inside all of these different pieces, even with the second pass, the silver is starting to really shine up. All right, and what we're looking at now is actually the third pass on this little gravy container and it does have lots of smudges from food over the years and fingerprints and things that have oxidized. And the more we polish it, the nicer it looks. But we have had two minutes on it and then we rinsed it, two more minutes, rinsed it. And now we're on the third section of two minutes. So like I say, this little gravy container is taking us six to eight minutes already just for this particular piece of silver. So it's not taking a long time. It's just that we need to make sure that we give ourselves plenty of time in order to, like I say, do the job correctly. And now we're rinsing all of the silver. So we've had two minutes on each of these individual items, and now we're rinsing it. This is after the third pass. So it took us three passes in order for us to get all of the different corners and little tiny intricacies of the silver polished. And now it's looking pretty good. And now that we're doing the final rinse, I'm rinsing it just in soapy water, and then I'm rinsing it with clear water, and then I'm gonna go ahead and dry it off. And if there are any smudges left, we're gonna do a little bit of extra polishing so that we can polish it and buff it up really nice before we give it back to the customer. All right, now as we're doing our final drying, I do see a few smudges here, and we're just gonna give it a little bit of extra elbow grease with our cotton cloth. And that's just gonna polish it up really nicely and it's gonna leave no fingerprints and no smudges, nothing that is not show ready. So this looks amazing. And you would never know that something so simple as Tarnix could transform and give brand new life to old tarnished black silver. Now, no product review would be complete without a before and after of the silver. So right now we've gone back and we've taken a look at the silver with all of the oxidizing and the fingerprints and the tarnish and the scratches and all the stuff that we're looking at from these before pictures of the platter and the gravy container, the little his and hers goblet and the Christmas bell and the knife. 
But when we look at the finished product and those of you that are in your car and you're listening to the podcast, you can't see what we're seeing. So I'm going to leave links in the show notes to this video so you can go back and look at the before and after because it is stunning. And if you are to produce these kinds of results for your clients, your clients would not only hire you back, but then they're going to refer you to their friends who also have silver to polish. So this is a great way to upsell to a customer who has silver or they've got a china cabinet full of silver or they have Christmas platters or things like this for special holidays. Now I'll give you a hint. The holidays are a really slow time leading up to the holidays. A lot of people will cancel on you, but if you can upsell your services to something like this, it is a no brainer and you're going to get hired back year after year to do this same process. So now you have the tools and you know how to do it. Alrighty, so now we've had a chance to take a look at Tarnex. We've given it a try. We've read the SDS sheet. We've learned all about it. We've learned about the work smart, not hard tools, and it does exactly what it says it's supposed to do. I'm going to give Tarnex the Savvy Cleaner seal of approval. And I really would like to say high five for putting all of the information on the back so that you can read the instructions and remind yourself before you use it. Now, if a customer asks you, can you come clean my silver? This is another product you can put inside your cleaning caddy. Now, I want to hear your feedback. Do you use Tarnex? And if you don't, what do you use instead? Let's start a conversation in the notes below. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.